Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's the fourth part in our Ryzen 3 2200G PC build. Last time I installed Windows and ran some performance tests, but you might want to run Linux instead of Windows, and so in this video I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint 19.1, including setting up a dual boot. So, if you want to install Linux on your new PC, and specifically Linux Mint, you need to go to the Linux Mint website as we are on here, and then go to Download, and that will take you to the download page for the latest version, which is currently Linux Mint 19.1 in February 2019. And uh, if you scroll down here, you'll see you can get either 32 or 64-bit versions. You want a 64-bit version for a new PC. And if you don't know which edition to get, go for the Cinnamon edition, that's the one most people download. So we'll click on Cinnamon 64-bit, it'll take you to this page where you'll see there's lots and lots of potential mirror sites to download from. I'm in the UK, so I'm going down to the one from the University of Kent Mirror Service, always serves me well. I'll click on that and we can download the file. And when it's downloaded, we can use a program like Etcher, which is the program I'm using here, to write that file to a USB drive. And I'm not covering this in great detail because I've got a video called Linux Mint 19 for Windows users, which goes through installing Linux Mint and doing all its configuration in great detail. So when this is all finished, we'll end up with a USB drive we can put into our PC. And I just point out I've returned the PC to its blank state. I've taken Windows off the SSD. And if we plug in our USB drive and boot it up, you'll discover we get to this boot menu, which we can use to a start Linux Mint from the USB drive. And uh, here we are arrived on the desktop. Uh, it's detected our network connection as well. And uh, to install Linux Mint from here, we simply have to go to the install Linux Mint icon, nice and uh, straightforward. And if we do that, I'll just take the default settings here for now. English is obviously fine anyway. I'll leave it on US English and uh, we will tick to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi, etc. That's a good idea. And the key thing I want to show you when we get there in a second is that we'll get to this screen. And this gives us a number of options such as Erase, Disk and Install, Linux Mint, the default, uh, and other things. But basically, because there isn't another operating system on this machine, the disk is blank, it'll basically run through from that position. So if I just clicked install now here, that would actually go through and install Linux Mint. And you could follow through all the process of this in my previous video, Linux Mint 19 for Windows users. However, as I've done that in the previous video, what I really want to cover here is how you do a dual boot. So for now, I'm going to quit out of this and we're going to come back to it when Windows is once again installed on this computer. Right. Once again, I'm booting up, and this time I'm pressing F12 during boot, which will take us to the boot menu. And I'm doing this because Windows is now on this machine, so by default, the machine will boot into Windows, but we still want to boot from the, the USB drive for Linux Mint. And specifically, we want to boot from its first uh, UEFI option there, so I'll click on that. And uh, fingers crossed, yes, we get to a menu, which where we can select at the top there, uh, Start Linux Mint, just as we did previously. And uh, here we are going to Linux Mint. And I would point out this has been a bit temperamental. It took me several attempts to get the machine to boot successfully into a Linux Mint from that menu, but uh, it does work if you keep trying. So we're back to exactly where we were before. I thought to make our lives easier, I'd do a bit of scaling of the fonts. There we are. And if I now go to install Linux Mint, just as we did in the last section, and again, we'll just flick through uh, to continue through. And we're now back to this screen. But here you can see there's an option to install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager. So we're going to have a dual boot system. This clearly couldn't be there previously because Windows wasn't previously on the machine. So if we continue with the, this, you will see that now it's given us a chance to take some space from the, the single drive we've got here, the SSD, and allocate it to Linux Mint. I think I'll allocate it a little bit less than that, maybe say about 40 gig, we'll leave about a, uh, 80 gig, say, for uh, Windows. This is a test system. Ideally, you wouldn't be using a SSD this small to have two operating systems, but it will work. And that would actually be okay. 
Now, I just want to point out that whilst this will work, it's not an ideal solution. Ideally, I wouldn't recommend having a dual boot system using a single SSD or indeed hard drive. I'd have each operating system on a different drive. And we can't see that here because there's only one drive connected to the system, but uh, if we transition to uh, this screen, I've basically gone back one level, but I've also, in that magical moment, actually added another drive to this system. So if I clicked on something else here, and uh, we continued, you'd see now we can actually have the option of using some more space. Here's the, another SSD I've added to this system. So we could actually put Linux Mint onto there. And to be really safe, what we could do is to put our uh, bootloader onto that drive as well. It's currently will be onto the standard SSD, but you could perfectly reasonably put it onto this Kingston SSD down there. And the reason you might want to do that is because sometimes Windows and its updates corrupts the bootloader, the system that allows you to choose your operating system when you're dual booting. And if you put it on a different drive, then Windows isn't likely to do that. So this would be the configuration if you've got two drives on your system to do a dual boot. This would be the safer way to do it. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna to continue to do it with one drive on the system, but I just wanted to show you that. Anyway, we'll now go back to where we were, which is uh, something like this and we'll continue to press install, which will create our dual boot system. And of course it checks we really do want to do this, obviously we do, and this will take a while to work through. So uh, yes, we really want to do it. It checks most sensibly several times, and there's now various things to do as we install the operating system as it were for Windows. I'll continue going through these, and uh, again, I'd remind you I've done all of this previously in the video called Linux Mint 19 for Windows users. So I'll flick through all this and we'll come back to real time when we've got a dual boot system. And uh, there we are, that is all finished. So it's now time to uh, restart the machine. And uh, here we are coming up again, and this time we should have a boot menu, we do. And as we've done the dual boot, the first thing I'm going to do is to test that Windows still works. So we'll go into uh, Windows. Fingers crossed, it hasn't all got messed up, but uh, we will see this is a live test. And uh, yes, Windows is still there. That's a good relief, isn't it? And hopefully we'll work uh, all right. Looks like it's still alive. Oh yes, Candy Crush is still trying to make its way into my life, so it must be okay. And uh, as you can see, our Windows drive is now obviously smaller because we shrunk some space off it to uh, accommodate Linux Mint. And uh, in theory, if the world is with us, we can uh, shut down and uh, restart. And we'll get back to that uh, dual boot menu in theory. Cross your fingers. Always good to cross your fingers to uh, make things happen in the wonderful world of computing. I'm doing this in real time so you can see exactly what is happening on this uh, particular setup. We're coming back up again, there we are. And this time we'll go into a Linux Mint. It would go there anyway. It would just wait a few seconds and then boot into it. And hopefully, if we're lucky, things are happening. I think they are. This is of course the first boot. Yes, it's gone in. What password did I set? I hope it was that. And uh, I think it was. And uh, yes, we've come into, welcome to Linux Mint. So there we are, we've managed to set up a dual boot. Now, as you may know, there are all sorts of discussions around the internet about how well Linux Mint will run on a, a Ryzen 3 2200G or 2400G or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is not to go through all the basic setups for Linux Mint. I've got another video on that, did I tell you? No, what I'm going to do is to leave you and come back tomorrow so I can have a real mess around with this system, see how stable it is and report back on that. So, here I am back again, almost 24 hours later, running Linux Mint 19.1 on the Ryzen 3 2200G. And I'm pleased to report that everything has gone very well indeed. Everything has been very stable. I've spent a lot of time on this system, I've been trying to stress it out, trying to make it crash, haven't managed to. And uh, if I didn't know there were supposed to be potential issues running Linux Mint on, on Ryzen hardware, I wouldn't even have thought to, to report anything on it at all. So, I've got HTOP running there because I know some of you like to see it. It's covering up the nicer Linux Mint logo there, isn't it? So let's, uh, let's get rid of HTOP, you've seen it if, if you wanted to. 
And uh, I'd point out that after I finished talking to you yesterday, I pulled in a lot of updates. There were loads of updates waiting. All these were waiting to be installed. It was a new install of the operating system. Perfectly reasonable those were waiting. And once those were installed, that's all I've done to this system. I haven't done any other things like other kernel changes. I've only got installed here what Linux Mint 19.1 wanted to have installed. And I'd point out if we go down to uh, preferences and a system information, which should be uh, down here somewhere, if I can grab the slider under, uh, probably under S, Chris, for a system information. And uh, you can see here it's booked up everything fine. It picked up the Radeon Vega 8 graphics without any issues at all. I didn't have to uh, install any drivers for that. That was there. And I understand that uh, Linux Mint 19.1 natively supports uh, Ryzen 3 2 200G and indeed the Ryzen 5 to 400G. And for me, as I say, it just worked very well. You can see it's reporting just under seven gigabytes of memory here because uh, one gigabyte of memory is uh, allocated by default to the GPU. But uh, there we are, it's working fine. And as you can see, the kernel I'm running here is 4.15.020 generics to give it its full title displayed there. And uh, as I said, I've got good system stability. But you might be thinking, how do I know that the graphics are actually working okay? Well, one of the things I did last night was to uh, run up GL Mark II to watch various 3D and 2D graphics tests on the screen, as we can see here. And they work fine, including the lovely rotating crystal rabbit. So 3D graphics just seem to be okay. And uh, I've tried various video playback. Here is a thing which has got something familiar on it playing. Video playback is absolutely fine. We keep seeing that again and again and again, don't we? That, that was okay. And I've also tried a Caden Live. You might see it's uh, on my desktop there. Let's bring up Caden Live and uh, let's go to a recent, and I've got various tests I've been playing with. And uh, down here, you'll see it, it plays fine. You can scrub the timeline. Absolutely fine. If I grab that, go back and forth, that's very, very fluid. And if you watch it playing, you'll see it'll get to a, a dissolve and a beautifully smooth dissolve. This is a very nice, very fluid editor. I could certainly edit very, very easily, very happily on, on this system on the, the Ryzen 3 2200G running a Linux Mint, which is, which is good, isn't it? So that's my basic feedback. The system has worked for me very well. I've had no stability issues. And the one thought I would give you, rather than a, a particular technical observation, but the one thought I've had is that I am running here on a, a Ryzen 3 2200G on a B450 chipset motherboard. And quite possibly the people who have a reported issues is because they've been running maybe on a B350 chipset, which hasn't given us the greatest stability as we get with a newer motherboard, which is more intended for the, the second generation risers. I don't know if that is true or not, but uh, I'm just trying to think why have I had no issues when other people have reported issues. Of course, it may also be that uh, I'm running this in, what, February 2019, whereas a lot of people have been playing with uh, Linux Mint uh, on the, the second generation Ryzen ships in the second half of 2018. And of course, drivers and things will catch up. But uh, anyway, for me, everything's worked very well. I'm very pleased with Linux Mint 19.1 on the Ryzen 3 to 200G. Our Ryzen 3 2200G PC is already a very capable computer that performs very well running either Windows 10 or Linux Mint. This said, in computing there are always opportunities for improvement and so in the next video I'm going to be fitting a graphics card upgrade. More information on this series can be found on explainingcomputers.com forward slash Ryzen. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.